Hi guys, Helen's Armory right here. We are going to be re reviewing the Griffin, but first, the YouTube things. If you're new here, subscribe button. If you're not, like button's there. Dislike button's there too if you don't like this video, but come on, it doesn't actually hurt the video, so just hit the like button instead. Um, comments, I go, of course, questions, all of that stuff, but the exciting thing is that it's summer, or spring, but it's summer-ish, so events might happen and wars might happen, please. Please, whatever thing created Corona, just back off, man. Um, I'm excited to try to get to some events, though it seems like North Carolina, where I live, is going to be a little subdued. So I'm asking you guys to help me out so I can get some gas money to travel to some other wars and meet some of you, my viewers. Um, I do have a uh, Patreon, if that's your uh, if that's your style. Uh, I have several tiers that have several um, different, you know, perks for joining them and I uh, and every time someone new joins I get to try something new because they join a new tier and it is a lot of fun so please check that out if you're more of the I want a thing guy I got merch teespring in the description all the things um, and all proceeds from those will go directly into getting me to wars to meet some of you guys so the blaster Griffin we know the Griffin it's been around for a long time uh, this is the first one I built I love 3D printed blasters. I like to build 3D printed blasters, especially now that I do YouTube and need content and 3D printed blasters are fun. They're some of my favorites. I, I love the flak. I love the Carney Rex things. Um, yeah, 3D printed blasters are great. So why have I never done a Griffin? Because I didn't have a reason to. I got that. Excuse me. For my usual like performance thing, I have that monstrosity, which I will run all the time, and I have some nice rewired stripes. So I never felt I needed a Griffin until I saw this body kit by Adrian and was like, I, all right, I'm printing one. Let's go, yeah, let's just do the thing. So yeah, I, I printed this one up in some beautiful eSun filaments. I cannot recommend the eSun PLA Plus more. It is now my go-to filament. Um, Anyone who has a printer out there, especially an Ender 3, my Ender 3 loves eSun stuff. Anyway, corporate shilling aside, not actually sponsored. Unless, you know, eSun, you see this and you want to sponsor me. Yeah, yeah, anyway. So this is a 3S build with um, the front uh, area up here being a wonderful spot for a LiPo battery. Um, I think the point of this version of the Griffin is to be able to do that and just go compact while keeping the back end super thin. Um, I will say, if you wanna run this one-handed, it's a little front heavy with the battery out front, so I might suggest the side battery box version instead. But two-handed, it's beautifully balanced. Um, uh, this stock was not hard to uh, build once I figured out how it works. Um, so if you like the aesthetics of this, I highly recommend building a griffin with this kit on it. Um, the fact that you can, it's really simple to do the little bit of machining, it just take a file to do uh, the stock bars. It means you can get them the perfect length for you and I have mine beautifully set up. Um, the other additional thing besides being a base griffin that I have on this is a two-stage trigger kit. Um, all the links to all the different files and stuff will be in the description below. Um, I like it. This is this is my first two-stage trigger build, and I wanted to experiment with it, as well as the back of my mind thinking this would not be a bad loaner for a high-power war. So the two-stage trigger was a great option, and I like the comfort of it and the ease of use. Um, given the motors I'm running, you can just do a straight like jerk pull, and a dart will come out flying pretty decently. So let's talk about performance. Uh, I do want this to be a high power war, uh, war build, um, something that could be an alternate to running my Caliburn at wars that have like a 200, 250 FPS cap. So this is a 41 millimeter daybreak setup with Flywheel World Krakens, which were suggested by me by many people on the internet. Thank you, lovely people of Facebook. Um, but sadly, it doesn't hit the 160 to 170 that I was hoping for. It hits about 130, which is HVZ legal, which this build 
should not be HVZ legal because I build too many things for HVZs. So I'm bummed. I don't know what else I could do. If you have a suggestion, go check, uh, go down in the comments and let me know. Um, I'm sure there's some electrical wizardry I could pull, you know, let some more blue smoke out so the pixies can dance faster. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. Um, so yeah, at the moment, I'm not super happy with this build based on performance. Um, that being said, if I pull out my wonderful, um, dual mag from the box, you know, it shoots just fine. Yeah, it works just fine. It's just hitting a little soft for my liking. Um, and to that point, let me address a problem. I stated in a previous video that the Adventure Force Pro Darts are not good for flywheelers. I rescind that. They work fine in straight feed uh, flywheelers where the dart is already directly in line with the cage. I think they work fine. However, in designs like the Grass Snake Mark II, which is what I mentioned it in, ignore that. Um, the fact that Oh, too many hands. It feeds at an angle. I think the soft head isn't the best answer there. So I rescind that and say sometimes they're terrible for flywheelers. So with that complaint rescinded, let me add a few more. The additions by Adrian in this two-stage trigger are great. I have no complaints about them. In fact, let's just shorten this guy up for a second so I can talk. I have a couple complaints about the Griffin. For one, can we please get some wider wiring channels? Feeding the wire down through this plate down into the grip was a pain in the butt. Doable, but not easy. Um, I used 16 gauge wire for most of my builds and that was a tight squeeze. We also need more room in the flywheel cage. It's become a more common thing. I do it for all of my builds now where the flywheel cage is connected to the rest of the blaster by an XT60. This is so if a malfunction happens up here, I don't have to mess with back here or my battery. So it's really a bummer that for this, you know, community built, community designed, wonderful primary blaster, the shell doesn't close because there's not enough room by the flywheel cage to fit an XT60. And you know, the, the holes that you run wires through are too small to fit an XC60 through. Yeah, I'm a little bummed by that. That's a minor thing and it, it, honestly, I think it could be very easily fixed, um, especially since how thin this thing already is. I think if you put, a, you know, five, 10 millimeters extra chunk on this guy, no one's gonna notice much less care. My second complaint about the Griffin is with how many freaking parts are needed to hold the pusher together. To the point where you can't test if your pusher works without putting the whole thing completely together, testing it, having it not work, take it completely apart to adjust one thing, putting it all back together to test it again. It's a geared pusher, so if you don't have the right uh, pusher throw lined up on the teeth, you may or may not actually feed a dart into the flywheels, which is one of the problems I was having putting this thing together and getting it working. And having to take off, you know, five screws, sorry, seven screws to just get off a side plate. But I also probably want to take off this top plate, which is four screws in itself. Um, not to mention five or six if you're taking off the back plate. More than that, if you want to mess with this uh, mechanism here. And screws down here to open up to get to the trigger and the switch. It, too many parts. There's just too many parts holding the thing together. And because of that, there are like three dozen screws on this thing. It's ridiculous. Now, I like it. I, I like the idea of a fully 3D printed, fully community designed and built and everything Strife clone because the Strife is very popular for a reason. This is one of my favorite blasters, but it is a Strife for a reason. The Strife is great. This should not be our community response. The strife is great because you open it up two parts, all your stuff 
sits on one side of the thing, you can address everything, fix everything, work on everything there, and just cover it up. This is a pain in the butt to try to fix. Not to mention, because I had my polar polarity fixed for a while, you cannot clear jams, especially on a Talon version. Getting your fingers up in the magwell is hard to do because it's a Talon magwell, so it's small, but the cage is shifted forward so far, you can't actually get your finger to the flywheel cage. And I have long fingers to, you know, try to push a dart out the other way. So you have to take the whole thing apart to clear a jam. That being said, I do like this blaster. I will run this blaster, but I think the Griffin needs to be replaced. It needs to be made more user friendly. The build itself isn't terrible because everything is very easy to print and therefore put together, but there's too many screws. It takes too much work to put together and adjust, much less clear a jam, which is ridiculous because if you don't think your blaster is going to jam, go to a war. You will have a jam. It happens. So something where a jam isn't accessible is ridiculous. I don't know. That's just my final comments on the griffin again am i going to run this blaster yes am i going to have a blast with this uh blaster yes do i understand why it's popular yes do i think it should be better yes this should be better hey guys thank you so much for watching sorry it's a bit of a bummer review but it happens every now and then hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you do please help support the channel um, all the funding that comes from my Patreon, my Teespring, um, maybe even from YouTube itself, if we hit that thousand subscriber mark, we're this close, we're this close, um, please, it all will go to me getting, getting me to events this summer so I can meet some of you guys and maybe get some in-person response of what you think my channel should do. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.